Geographers, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel and welcome to the last topic review video of Unit 4. Today we're going to be going into Unit 4, Topic 10, Consequences of Centrifugal and Centripetal Forces. Now before we get into this last topic review video, I want to make sure you remember to watch my unit summary video after this. The video is about 30 minutes long, but it goes over all the major concepts in Unit 4. There's a lot of information in there, but it's a great resource to make sure that you're ready for your test or you're ready for that AP National Exam. I've also created a study guide that goes along with the video, answer keys, practice quizzes, and more. All of these resources can be found in my ultimate review packet. You can find the link for it in the description below. I know I talk about that packet all the time in these videos, but it's a great resource. I've spent a bunch of time making sure that that resource will prepare you both for your class and that national exam. All right, so the first thing we have to do when going into unit four, topic 10, is we have to understand the difference between centripetal and centrifugal forces. Centrifugal forces are things that pull a country apart while centripetal forces are things that pull a country together. Countries that have more devolutionary factors at play are also probably experiencing more centrifugal forces. If a country is made up of different nationalities, has a high degree of economic and social inequality, has multiple language barriers, or discrimination and corruption are rampant throughout society, they're most likely experiencing centrifugal forces. These different forces would pull the country apart and create division within the state. This could lead to conflict occurring or even violent. On the other hand, countries that have less devolutionary factors at play are more likely to be experiencing centripetal forces. If a country has a strong sense of patriotism, a strong national government, economic and social opportunities for all citizens, lacks corruption and discrimination, or has a shared history, language, or religion, they're more likely experiencing centripetal forces. States with many centrifugal forces may become failed states. This is when the government is no longer able to govern the land. This happens because the people no longer acknowledge the authority of the government. We could start to see the rise of nationalist movements as different nations and ethnic groups form their own movements and possible own governments within a state. Or we could start to see an increase in inequality between different parts of the state, with some regions seeing more economic and social opportunities over other regions of the state. While states that have many centripetal forces are more likely to see engaged citizens who are vested in the country's national interest, this can lead to more economic and social prosperity as we start to see more economic and social opportunities for all citizens in the state. And we'll also start to see an increased acceptance of different cultures and the promotion of ethno-nationalism, which is when a state's national identity is based on a common ethnicity. And there you have it. States that have more centripetal forces are going to have an easier time governing their states, while states that struggle with centrifugal forces are going to have more conflict. Now the time has come to practice the concepts we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen and then check your answers in the comments below. Also remember geographers to check out that unit four summary video. I can't stress enough how much information is in there. It was actually pretty hard to get it all down just to 30 minutes to cover this entire unit. Plus all the study guides and all those other great resources all can be found in that ultimate review packet. You can find the link in the description below. All right, geographers, that's all the time I have for today. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.